This question concerns two planes, P1 and P2, with equations given here and here. And we're asked to find the parametric equations for the line of intersection of P1 and P2. So geometrically, if you have two planes that intersect, they'll intersect in a line. And we'd like to find the equation of that line. Now, it's worth taking a moment to just try to imagine, try to visualize what will an answer to this question look like. And we're given a hint right here. We're given, hey, you can imagine, you know, well, we'll want to plug something in here for x, write down something here for y, and write down something here for z. So let me just uh, leave that for a moment and come down here and say, well, a line of intersection, that's the equation of a line. So recall that the equation of a line can be written like this. This is called the vector form or parametric form, which is indeed what we're asked for. And it says if you have a starting point P and a direction vector V, then you can get to any point on the line with position vector X by starting at P and moving in the direction of V. So another way to write this is to write out the components. A general vector and the three components is written as X, Y, Z, and then what we really need is to know, gee, what's the direction vector? What numbers are going to go in here? And what's the starting point? What numbers are going to go in here? So let's jot that down. We need a point on the line. So that means the line is the line of intersection, so we need a point on both planes. And we're given a hint, actually. We're given a hint that there is a point of the form AAA on both planes. So let's go ahead and plug in AAA to, well, you could do either P1 or P2. AAA lies on uh, for some A lies on both planes, so you could choose P1 or P2. Let's choose P1. So if we plug in A for X, and then A for Y, and then A for Z into that first equation, you get A plus 2A minus A equals 2. So that implies that A equals 1. So 1, 1, 1 is on the line. Okay. Now, what else are we going to need? We're also going to need a direction vector. So how can we find a direction vector? Well, let's look at the equations of the planes and let's just jot down, so for this one here, let's jot down the normal vector for that plane. We'll call it n1. You get the normal vector by reading off the component, the uh, coefficients of x, y, and z. So in this case, it's 1, 2, minus 1. And then for the second plane, we'll call that normal vector for that plane n2, and it has components 2, 1, 4. So on the little diagram here, if this is uh, the first plane, then a vector perpendicular to that plane is a normal vector, n1. And uh, if this plane here is the second plane, a vector perpendicular to that plane is n2. We need a vector that goes in the direction of the line. Well, since the line is entirely in the first plane, the direction of the line has to be perpendicular to the normal vector for the first plane. And since the line is in the second plane, the direction of the line has to be perpendicular to the normal vector for the second plane. So we need a vector perpendicular to both n1 and n2. And so here's a good point good place to recall that you get 
a vector perpendicular to two given vectors by taking the cross product. And so I'll just write this down. I won't compute it in detail, uh, but you can work out the cross product this way. And so what you'll get is 9i minus 6j minus, oops, sorry. minus 3k, or with angle bracket notation, 9 minus 6 minus 3. And that's the direction of the line. So we found a point on the line, it's 1, 1, 1. So the, the 1, 1, 1 can go here, that's our starting point. And the direction of the line, we found 9 minus 6 minus 3. And so then you look and you say, well, x, uh, the first component here is x, it's got to be 1 plus 9t. So 1 plus 9t. The second component, y, is 1 minus 6t. The third component, z, is 1 minus 3t. So any point on the line of, of intersection, x, y, z, uh, can be written like this for some t. And if you have the time and the inclination, it might be worth checking. So when we say that x looking like this, and y looking like this, and z looking like this, y on both planes, it means that if you were to plug in this x, this y, this z into either equation, into the, the equation of the plane uh, p1, or the equation for the plane p2, those equations should work out. If you plug x, y, z into p1, into the left-hand side, you should get exactly 2, and you do, and you can check that out for yourself if you like. But anyway, there's the answer. Now the next part of this question asks us to find an equation for the plane which passes through the point Q given to us, 1, 2, 3, and which has a normal vector n perpendicular to each of the normals for the planes P1 and P2 above. So since this question is referring to the previous question, in fact it, it refers precisely to the normals for the planes P1 and P2, let's jot those down. So the normal uh, for the first plane is 1, 2, minus 1. And the normal for the second plane is 2, 1, 4, as we've already seen. And now we're asked to find a normal vector n perpendicular to each of these normals. Well, we already did that in the previous question. By taking the cross product of these two vectors, we get a vector which is perpendicular. So we've already worked that out. It's 9 minus 6 minus 3. Okay. So we have a normal vector for the plane we're after. And let me just step back for a second. And with this question too, it might be worth asking at the start, before you write anything serious down, what will an answer to this question look like? Well, we're asked to find an equation of a plane find an equation for the plane. So our answer is going to be something like ax plus by plus cz equals d. If we can figure out what what to put down for a, b, c, and d uh, so that the so that this equation represents a plane with uh, the normal that we want and through the point that we want will be done. Now I'm going to erase that and I'm just going to draw a plane so here's a plane, and uh, we'd like the point Q to be on it. So here I'll just draw a point Q, and uh, we'd like it to have a given normal vector, which we already know. Okay. And so what we need now is to remember the equation for a plane. So one way of writing it is like this, n dot vector x minus vector p equals 0. So this is an equation uh, you might have memorized. If you don't have it memorized, we can derive it rather quickly. So if, let me draw a little coordinate axis here. So let's, let's say uh, that this point here is just any old point on the plane. I'm going to draw the position vector of this point and I'm going to call it x. x is any old point on the plane. And then I'm going to call the vector from the origin to the given point on the plane, I'm going to call that P. 
And then what you see is that this vector here is x minus p. And because this vector x minus p goes from a point in the plane to the point to another point in the plane, that vector is in the plane. And so it's got to be perpendicular to the given vector, which is exactly what this equation is saying. Now I'm going to rewrite this equation as just a moment as n dot x equals n dot p. And so here we have n is the given vector. Well, I've already written it down, but I'll write it down again. It's 9 minus 6 minus 3. p is uh, the position vector corresponding to the given point on the plane. So in this case, the given point on the plane is 1, 2, 3. So p is the position vector with components 1, 2, 3. And x is just represents any arbitrary point on the plane. And so now we just plug these three things here into the uh, equation of the plane. And so what we get is 9 minus 6 minus 3 dot x, y, z equals 9 minus 6 minus 3 dot 1, 2, 3. We do the dot product. Uh, 9 minus 12 uh, minus 9 is minus 12. And there's your answer. This is the equation of the plane with, the, with a, a normal vector, which is perpendicular to the two normal vectors above. Right? And it goes through the given point 1, 2, 3. And if you want, now this is right because we, we've done everything correctly, but if you want, you could just check, gee, does the point 1, 2, 3 actually uh, satisfy this equation? And if you plug 1 for x, 2 for y, z for 3 in, you will indeed uh, get that this equation is true as it should be. All right, and that's it.